In this presentation, we will record transaction related to the acquisition of property, plant, and equipment or long-term assets or depreciable assets. We'll talk about a situation where there's a purchase of a long-term asset, a depreciable asset, property, plant, and equipment, and a situation where there's a donation or contribution of some type of property, plant, and equipment. Get ready, because here we go with Aplos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to head on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're currently in tab number seven. Tab number seven, I'm going to be down here on uh, line 25. So we're in F25. We're going to have two types of transactions here. We're going to have the purchase of property, plant, and equipment and the contribution of property, plant, and equipment starting with the purchase. So I'm going to highlight the purchase one. I'm going to make it green because that helps me to kind of know where my eyes are going and be less likely to do something uh, silly or pick up the wrong number. Not that I will not do that, but i less likely to do that. So here we have it. So we have the property, plant, and equipment is going to be increasing, and then the cash is going to be decreasing. We're going to say that we're purchasing, purchasing the property, plant, and equipment uh, with cash. Now, what's the difference between this and any other type of transaction? Simply that the property, plant, and equipment is going to be used at some time into the future. This is the same for for-profit type of organizations as well. And we have to say, well, if I put that all as an expense, even though I paid cash in the current period, in the, in the current month, then this month it's going gonna, it's gonna to distort the comparison of the income statement because the income statement for this month is going to be a lot lower, even though that equipment's going to be benefiting things in the future. And therefore, if I compared this month to next month, and if I had expensed it, then it wouldn't be really fair to this month, right? Because it would make this month look bad because I purchased something that's going to be benefiting into the future. How do you fix that? You put it on the books as an asset instead, and then you're going to depreciate it kind of over the useful life when you use it. So we'll talk a little bit more about depreciation. We have a whole course on depreciation methods and how you're going to deal with depreciation, but that's the, the general concept. So in, in practice, basically, anytime you're purchasing something that's fairly large, possibly want a dollar or mark limitation where you start to think about, okay, is this something I, that I can't expense, but rather need to put on the books as an asset and then depreciate it? And if you do, then you probably need to give that information and the detail of it to your tax preparer as, as you track that information uh, in, in that format. So what's that going to look like on the trial balance? Well, if we go up to the trial balance, we know that the cash will be going down. Property, plant, and equipment then is going to go up here being the uh, furniture and equipment. Now I have the, the two journal entries are both recorded here. So uh, this is just the 13. It's going up by the 13 and down 13 on the cash. And then we'll depreciate it or have an allowance for it at a later time. And we'll talk about that. That'll be an adjusting entry and we will expense it in the form of depreciation with that adjusting entry. All right, so let's then uh, fairly, fairly straightforward transaction uh, once we know it's not an expense and it's going to an asset account. So then we can go back to our uh, dashboard here in Aplos and ch check out the transaction. So we'll go to the fund accounting and it's going to be cash going down. So I typically would use like a registered type of transaction for that. So I think the easiest thing to do then is going to go to the uh, check register. So I'm going to just go transactions and then the register here. The registers that we have, notice you got the drop down. Anything that I put next to the, the account in the chart of accounts with a register uh, we'll, we'll typically have that. Let me show you that for, for a second. If I right click on this tab up top, because uh, we will be going back to this register in the future to add an account most likely. And then if I duplicate this tab, we're going to have these two tabs open. Let's then go to the register or the chart of accounts, I mean. So we're in the fund accounting. We're going to go to the accounting drop down and then the account list, which is basically the chart chart of accounts and there's all of our accounts. Now, anything that we put on the side that has basically a register type of format, uh, and this is the icon for it, or this is what we'll have, means that we'll have kind of this register, which looks kind of like a checkbook type register that you might be used to if you ever, you know, tracked your information by hand in a checkbook. And so also note that we're as we're in the assets uh, section, we have down here under fixed assets, simply a building. So we're going to have to add to that uh, and, and add another account or change that account name possibly to what type of assets we're going to be using, which is going to be the furniture and fixtures. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that as we go. So here we are. We're going to say then the date. Let's make the date January 8th. 
So I'm going to say bring this on back to January the 8th, please. And then we're going to say who's this going to go to? I'm going to I'm just going to say Office Depot. So I'm adding a new contact. In this case, you would think of it as basically a vendor, someone we pay money to. Note that the vendors, unless they're going to be a major vendor, probably don't need as much detail. I need to I need to know the name that I'm going to write on the check or whatever, or what I'm going to enter into the system. Whereas the contacts who are customers, you probably want, and you're going to spend time trying to get more detail on, on them so that you can communicate with them in the future and hopefully collect more contributions. So that's typically how that's going to work. So in other words, when you're writing the check to someone like Home Depot uh, or something like that, you probably don't need uh, too much, too much more information. So, uh, whereas if it's a customer, you may want more. All right, then the amount. The amount is going to be, I think, it was thirteen thousand. We're talking thirteen thousand here. Yeah, the cash went down by the thirteen. So let's do that. One three zero zero zero. It's going to be a payment, not a deposit. It's coming out of the checking account. I'm not going to have a, a check number. I'm going to I'm going to basically assume it's an electronic trans transaction, and we're going to be decreasing the uh, checking account for it. Now the other account that's affected is going to be this bill. Well, it's going to be some kind of property, plants, and equipment. Now I want to put it into furniture and fixture. The only type of property, plants, and equipment account we have is this uh, building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I need to go back to my accounts over here. Let's go back to the accounts. And I'm going to say, well, you, maybe I don't have a building. You know, maybe we rent. So maybe I'm going to just change the name here and say, well, let's just, they, they already have this account. Let's just change it from building and make it, uh, this is going to be, what did we call it over here? Let's just double check. So we're at somewhat consistent with the naming convention. So we'll take the equipment. We'll pick up the equipment. And we'll put that here. So I'll put the equipment to there. So that looks good. Also note just the formatting of this. We have this account. I'm going to say save. So that looks good here. So we have this account under the fixed assets. So we have we can we can add more of these subsections. So these are common kind of subsections in the reporting current assets and then fixed assets. And then if you wanted to further break out, say you had property plants and equipment and automobiles and buildings and whatnot, you could further break out with the use of subcategories. So you could set up an account called uh, equipment and furniture and then make two subcategories why would you need two one for the for the cost and one for the allowance or accumulated depreciation related to it and and then the total so you could have the total in that format or you could basically put it all in in the, the fixed assets and let the fixed assets represent the the total amount so that's what we have there so that looks good I'm gonna go back to the first tab and say now, now we can pick up the proper account, hit in the drop down. We want that 15,000, 15,000 account number, furniture and fixture. Uh, the fund that we're going to have, I'm just going to say the fund is going to be uh, unrestricted. And notice again, I'm most concerned with the funds uh, and, and that breakout on the statement of activities or the, or the income statement. We're not going to have any, ta and these are two balance, this is going to be two balance sheet accounts affected cash and, and the furniture and equipment. I'm not going to put anything in the unrestricted or restricted tag section to further uh, break that out. That's going to be it. What's going to happen? Well, it's, the checking account is going to be going down due to it's coming out of the checking account. Other side is going to go into that new account that we adjusted or set up. 1500 which is the equipment and furniture that's an asset account no effect on the income statement all right let's go ahead and submit to that and check it out make sure that they don't give me any kind of red thing like that i did something wrong or something down here also note you got the transaction detail uh down below so as you enter this you're going to be entering it in up top and then you can easily see that the, the uh, transaction detail it's from uh you know the most current date is up top on the transaction detail all right, let's go back to the second tab. Let's go back to the second tab. Let's, let's take a look at some of our reports. We're going to go to the reports then and check out those reports. We want to take a look at our standard reports, the balance sheet, but the balance sheet by fund. So if you haven't set up the balance sheet by fund in your favorites here, you can find it down below, but it really should be in the favorites at this point. And then I'm going to go back on over to the first half, right click on it, duplicate it again. And then let's go to the reports. And then let's pick up the income statement by fund. So we have the balance sheet by fund. Now let's take a look at the income statement by fund. Then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. And I'm going to change the date, even though we probably don't need to. But I like to bring it back to the month we're working in, which is going to be January. I'll bring it to the end of January, January 31st. Okay, so what happened here? We've got uh, within the assets section. Now we have the equipment 
furniture and fixture. It's going to be in, we have it in the uh, unrestricted categorization. Now, note you might be saying, hey, I kind of am used to seeing the furniture and fixture broken out into another categorization. So if we want to see those subcategories, and you'll recall we, we saw the, those lines on the subcategories under assets. We had current assets and uh, long-term assets. Notice this is kind of like a simple or simplified type of balance sheet that's not showing those subtotals, which often is nice, especially if you're giving this to someone that doesn't uh, understand financial accounting as much because the subtotals will add more detail. And we already got two columns going on here uh, when you're giving this to like the board or something like that. But if you hit the drop down up top, we're going to say that uh, we want to add the subtotal by group. So let's add the subtotal by group and then you'll get those subtotals. So you'll recall that uh, we had the current assets up top. So within assets, we have the subtotal group of the current assets and the fixed assets. This is kind of like the default format that you'll typically see in financial accounting. Uh, for for-profit types of organizations like the standard report for like a QuickBooks or some other accounting software will typically be broken out and have the subcategories in it. You'll note that basically the default setting here is to remove it, which is actually a little bit easier to, to, to move with uh, in some cases because those subtotals, you'll, you can see how much longer, of course, the, the report is just because now you got a bunch of subtotals that you're dealing with. So if we go then into the 13,000, of course, then we'll find our transaction. So there's the transaction. If we were to go into it further, we can drill down into that source document uh, that we had input into the system. The other side, of course, came out of the cash. So within the checking account, if we go into the checking account here, we see that um, we have that decrease for the Office Depot of the 13,000. So there's the two sides. You'll note that there's no effect here on the p l the profit and loss or income statement if i go over to the income statement we change the dates to this year to date this year to date then uh, there, there's no effect here the point being it's not on an expense we don't see any expense happening even though we paid cash okay let's go back on over to uh, excel and say what about what if someone like donates like this long-term property plant and equipment that we're going to be using within the not-for-profit organization i'm going to make this blue now because it's done and then I'm not going to make the other one any color because we usually work on the last one here so now we're going to say that property plants and equipment is going up again but we didn't pay cash for it someone just gave it to us as part of the contribution this is going to be similar to the first transaction we had up here you'll recall where someone gave us the use of the facilities which is going to be like a you know what we did was record the rent that we consumed and then the, the donation, which is basically revenue. Same kind of concept here. We're going to say, all right, well, we're going to put it on the books at property, plants, and equipment, which is an asset rather than ex an expense this time because we're not consuming it. It's going to be something we're going to use into the future. And then the other side is going to go into the contributions uh, without, uh, without donor restrictions. So it, it's ha just like with the other property, they gave us something that's not, that is restricted in form but they didn't put any restrictions on how we can use it so it's going to go into the revenue account but it's going to have no restrictions even though it's kind of restricted in in form right they didn't tell us what we need to do with it okay so that's going to be the transaction there also note that we would need to know the value uh, and we'd have to value this somehow which isn't always easy with something like a fixed asset account we would have to use some kind of fair value method to to value this to put this into our system in the proper format little tricky of a, of a way we got to put this in but have a very nice system with Aplos to to do this now one of the reasons this is a little bit tricky is because we don't just want to do the transaction the two accounts affected but we also want to make sure that we're tracking the contribution and so we typically want to go through that same kind of format which is in the donations area and then we would like to set it up as a contribution and then go into the contributions here instead of a contribution however this contributions form is usually used when we're talking about uh, cash contributions rather than uh, property plants and equipment so that's what's going to be a little bit uh, tricky about it it'll be similar to a, to a contribution we did last time or we've done before with the rental uh, property contribution but however you'll recall the rental property what we did is two income statement accounts basically affected one going up to revenue the other an expense this one's going to be an asset account that's going to be affected, which is going to throw us off a little bit. We'll have to do it a little bit differently, and I'll show you why here. So this is how we can enter this into the system. 
and achieve uh, you know our objectives. So we're going to say this is going to be a con this is going to be I'm going to call it uh, d uh, donor three, which I set up. I set donor three as a new contact. So if you don't have them set up, there'll be a new contact. We're still going to use the general. This is kind of like it acts kind of like a product or service item uh, for a for profit. If you were to make an invoice or a uh, sales receipt, in other words, it's going to be pointing. That's what we're going to use to point to the proper accounts as well as assign the proper categorization. I'm going to say it's unacknowledged at this point. We haven't sent a thank you letter or, or anything. Let's bring it on back to January 8th as well. I think that's what we were on. The amount then is going to be for what's the amount? Uh, let's check that out. That's going to be for 115. So we're going to say 115 there. And then down here, now you'll recall last time, this is where we, we allowed this to be a transaction because what's the next step on this usually is to do the deposit. Now we're still going to do the next step, which is a deposit. However, we, we don't want the checking account actually to go down. What we want is for the asset account to go up. Now, last time, what we wanted was the expense account rent to go up. Now, last time we did something similar to this where someone gave us donated rental property. This time we want an asset to go up. So it's a little tricky because uh, we're going to be limited to the expense account section. We're going to have to do a little bit different of a transaction to do so. So I'll show you that in a second. I'm still going to enter the 11.5 here. And so the objective is to be assign this expense account. Uh, in the next step, we would like to assign it as an, as an asset, fixed asset account. But we're, we're not going to be able to. We'll be limited to the expense. So we'll, we'll show you how we'll deal with that. And we're not going to enter anything down below. So that looks good. So I'm going to say save and close, save and close. Now, the next step is typically to take all those deposits that you have, take them to the bank. This isn't actually a deposit, so you don't want to group this with any other deposit because we're just using the deposit screen to zero this transaction out while still uh, adding the donor and being able to track this information as a standard donation with the donation kind of reporting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'd, I'd like to check this off. I'm going to create a deposit then. So, but there's not, and then I'm going to say this is on the January 8th. So let's hit this back and bring this back on to January number eight, January 8th. And so there we have that. And note, once again, you could do this a little bit quicker by going directly to uh, this deposit screen and you could populate, you know, the same information in essence as we've seen before. The key point here is that it's going to, we got the checking account affected but it's going up in terms of the amount and the expense is the same. So the amount hitting the checking account is zero. Nothing's going to go in there. Last time this happened, we recorded the other side to an expense account for rent. Now, uh, this time we would like it to go into the asset account. So the thing that we would like to see here is to be able to see assets, but I can't. I can only pick an expense, and, but it's not an expense. We didn't consume it. It should be, it should be in, in the property plants and equipment. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a clearing account here, which means I'm just going to put it into the expense account and then reallocate it with a journal entry up to the property plant and equipment account. So to do that then, and I know that might sound a little complicated, but it's not too bad. We're going to, we're going to go back up top. I'm going to right click on this tab up top. So I'm going to right click on this tab. We're going to duplicate this tab so we can, we can be working on two tabs at the same time. And then we want to go back into our accounting. So let's go into our accounting. Let's go into our uh, accounts. And we want to take a look at uh, the account lists. So the account lists. And then I'm going to go down and say that, uh, note we want this transaction to go here, but we can't make it uh, go there. We have to go down to an expense account. So what I'd like to do is make an expense account that it'll go into and then back out of. I'm going to call it a clearing account. Now, to make that very distinct, it should be zero at the end of the day, not a temporary account, not that it's going to clear out at the end of the month, but it, but it's a clearing account and that it's going to be cleared like right after one, it's going to go into that account and go out of it. To make that very apparent that it should be a zero balance at the end of the day, we're going to add a new group. I'm going to have a whole new group and just call this clearing accounts, right? And then I'm going to say save so these are accounts that should have zero balances. If there's any account in this category, it should be a zero balance uh, type of account. Then I'm going to add an account within the category. And I'm going to say this is for uh, P, uh, property, plants, and equipment. Let's make it 8100. Uh, and the fund 
I'm going to say is unrestricted. I'll say unrestricted. And then I'm going to pick the name, which is going to be uh, PPE contribution, property, plant, and equipment contribution. And uh, so there we have that. I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now we have an expense, so 8100. Then if I go back to the prior screen, back to the prior screen, I should be able to pick that 8100 as an expense, considering it is an expense type of account. And then we have that. So what's this transaction going to do when we record it? It's not going to do anything to the checking account because it's a zero transaction. It's going to be recording the expense account, increasing here PP&E by that 11.5. The other side is going to go to the income account uh, for the 11.5 and, uh, gen that's going to be driven by that general uh, setting for the purpose. So let's go ahead and save it and then we'll check it out. So we'll say save here and then let's go back up to our reports. So I'll go to the reports. I'm looking at the, this is the balance sheet. Let's go to the income statement here. So I want to go to the income statement, which I overwrote somehow. So I'm going to go to the reports. Back to the reports. I'm going to open up the income statement again. So I'm going to say reports. And then I want to check out uh, the income statement by fund. And then I want to make sure that I'm on uh, this year to date. This year to date. And okay, so then we have the contributions. So contributions that are uh, uh, not restricted, unrestricted here should go up. So if I go on that 237,000, we have the contribution. There's the 11,500. That looks good. The other side then, if I go back, back on over, is increasing the uh, amount in the clearing account. So here it is. And that's the 11,500. Now it's in the clearing account. That means it should go back down to zero. Now we're going to take it out of there and put it where we want it to go which is the property, plant, and equipment. We can do that with it with a journal entry, uh, or we can use a register. I, I'm comfortable with the journal entry. So let's check that out. I'm going to go back on over. We're going to go to the accounting again. So we'll go to the accounting, transactions. We're going to enter a journal entry. So let's enter a journal entry here. And I'm going to say this is also on the date of January 8th. So we'll make that January 8th. So uh, property, let's just call it PPE donation. And then we're going to say this is going to go into the account. Now we're going to increase. This is with a debit of uh, the 1500 account 1500. And I'm going to say it's going to be unrestricted. And then we don't need anything here. The debit amount is going to be that 11.5, I believe, is what we're working with here. 11.5, yes. 11.500. We don't need any, any other categorization here, so we look good. The other side is going to be going out of that new account we set up in the expenses, PP and E, uh, uh, 8100. It's also, it's going to be, the fund should be unrestricted. I'm going to say unrestricted here unrestricted and then that's going to be the credit of 11500 now if you're not good with the with the debits and credits obviously if you went the wrong way what would happen you'd see this account be doubled and it, it, and that would be wrong way right <laughs> and then you just switch the debits and credits and you'd be back on so the total debits add up to the total credits this is going to be our transaction so i'm going to say uh, post this this should be taking the, the, this amount out of the income statement it should go back down the other side should be increasing the equipment. So we'll say post that. And then if I go back to the income statement and I say let's refresh this report with a little refresh button up uh, by the URL up top and uh, check this thing out. Now we don't have anything in that clearing account. So it's been removed. That's what we would expect to see. If we then go back over to our balance sheet and refresh this report, then we should see in our PP and E, property, plant, and equipment, which has, or the fixed assets, they call it here, uh, the equipment here at the 24.5. If I go into that 24.5, there's our 11.5 there as well. Let's take a look at one more report. I'm going to go back to the first tab, right click on it. Uh, actually, just let, let's just look at the report in here. We'll go to the, to the reports and the other thing that we we're achieving or looking to achieve by going through this kind of process is to to see that 
donation by uh, contacts. So these are, are, are the donations by contact. And then we could still see the list of that donation happening here. So we can then, you know, sort our contacts, which I know these are just generic names, but we can sort our contacts and we could see that, that actual donation. So that's one of our objectives. We want to get the accounts to be correct. And we also want to be tracking uh, these donations as they come in as well for our reporting purposes. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.